Hello everyone. So let's get started with the next chapter that is neural control and coordination. First is a very simple topic that is classification of nervous system. So before that, high yield topics for this chapter. As far as nervous system is concerned, you can expect three or four questions. Out of which I here can expect. I is most important than here. And synapse is almost asked every year. Then they can ask a question about action potential. So questions will be very simple. How many sodium ions are pumped out? How many so potassium ions are pumped in? Those kind of questions. And they can ask you on general classification of nervous system and the structure of a neuron. These are some of the topics that are important for your NEET exam. So we'll be discussing in I mean, we'll be discussing all these topics in different videos. So let us start with the basic classification of nervous system. I thought this picture will be simple to explain how the nervous system is classified. So if you take nervous system, it is broadly classified into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. You all know this. So if you take central nervous system, we have got brain and then spinal cord. And along with this, the most important point that you must know is there are two types of nerves that comprises the central nervous system. So if you take, you have got cranial nerves. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves. And you have got 31 pairs of spinal nerves. So this can be a question. So many pairs of cranial nerves and spinal nerves are present. 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves. And coming on to your peripheral nervous system, you have got efferent and you have got afferent. So always remember efferent is a motor pathway, afferent is a sensory pathway. Now, if you remember a reflex arc that you would have studied in your lower classes. So this is your burning candle. So you try to move your hand towards it. And at one point of time, you will try to withdraw, right? So if you take what happens there is a sensation that you are touching the hot object is being carried. So it is carried to your central nervous system. So either mostly to the spinal cord or sometimes to your brain. So from there, a corresponding signal comes that will be your motor signal. So here, if you take, you are trying to withdraw your hand, means you are trying to move your hand away. So again, movement is caused by muscles. Muscles is a motor thing, right? So all your sensations are carried by your afferent pathway. So always I have told you afferent is when it goes towards a particular center, when a path goes towards a center. So similarly, if you take, we have said the renal system, we have got something called afferent arteriole, right? So what is that afferent arteriole? The arteriole is projecting or it is moving towards glomerulus, a particular center. So in nervous system, afferent pathway always carries sensory information to your CNS. And efferent pathway is going to carry the motor information away from the CNS to your different parts of the body. So efferent pathway, afferent pathway, we have got some specific nerve fibers that is not that important. Now efferent pathway is a bit complex. So if you take efferent pathway, we have got two groups of efferent pathway. One is called as ANS, another one is called as SNS, somatic nervous system. What is this ANS? So for all your skeletal muscles, that is your voluntary muscles, somatic nervous system is going to supply. For all your involuntary muscles, like if you take, for example, movement of hand, it is a voluntary action, right? So if you want, you can do it. So movement and all these muscles associated with the limbs, are all supplied by this somatic nervous system, whereas all your organs are supplied by autonomic nervous system. And if you take autonomic nervous system, we have got PNS, CSNS, that is sympathetic nervous system, and an enteric nervous system. I'll tell you what is this enteric nervous system shortly. So you have got autonomic nervous system that is supplying involuntary structures, that is parasympathetic, sympathetic, enteric. Now, this ANS is an important question. They can ask you about the neurotransmitters released by the PNS and the sympathetic, or they can ask you some actions of PN, uh, parasympathetic and sympathetic. I'll tell you. First, we'll just have a table like thing. So PSNS, that is parasympathetic nervous system and sympathetic nervous system. 
the first point with respect to them is the neurotransmitter so your parasympathetic nervous system is going to mediate its action by releasing acetylcholine as a primary neurotransmitter so in short i can write as ach acetylcholine sympathetic nervous system has got adrenaline or epinephrine or noradrenaline or norepinephrine as its primary neurotransmitter the second one is it has got inhibitory action on all systems except git very important meaning it will decrease the heart rate it will decrease the cardiac output it will decrease the bp and then it will constrict the pupil the symbol is meaningless here my eraser is becoming bit slow i'm sorry okay, just never mind this this is just going to constrict the pupil and then other functions okay it is just causes constriction of pupil but in git is going to increase acid secretion is going to increase the motility of the git muscles etc okay so it is going to inhibit all the other physiological functions it will increase decrease the renal blood flow gfr everything but except git and similarly sympathetic is going to be other way around so it is going to increase the heart rate it is going to increase the cardiac output increases the bp causes dilatation of the pupil everything is going to be stimulating except in git where it is going to be inhibiting right so this will decrease the acid secretion decreases the gi motility etc so git is gastrointestinal tract okay so this is the basic thing that you must know with respect to um P psns and sns entric nervous system if you take the nervous system of git so entric is like a separate nervous system that is sometimes controlled by your ans okay that's a different story so that's why if you take psns and sns they have got an opposite action on git because this in turn is going to control the entric nervous system so the actions are going to be opposite right so it's not needed for you but i'm just trying to give you an idea so pn if you take entric system and p uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic like quite opposite so inhibitory signal sent from parasympathetic is going to know or to say inhibit the entric nervous system so the action is going to be opposite so it's like a ulta way okay that's why we have git as separate thing, right so not that important never mind that point but just make sure you know the concept of inversional activation okay entric nervous system is going to be quite opposite because the inverse relation so that is why in git the actions are opposite to a normal usual psns and sns action right so most important you just have to know is this neurotransmitters that is most important now let us try to understand a structure of a neuron so if you take structure of a neuron a typical structure you all know we are all learning it right from a grade 7 so it has got something called as an axon it has got dendrites it has got a cell body okay with the nucleus it has got ox axon terminal and all so few important things that might be new to us is one is node of ranvier's quanzel myelin sheath so if you take we have got two types of neurons one is myelinated nerve fiber another one is non myelinated nerve fibers so almost all our nerve fibers are going to be myelinated because it is going to act as an insulator like if you take a copper wire the copper wire is going to be surrounded by an insulator right we we have blue color red color all that insulating materials around the wires so same thing just imagine neuron to be like a copper wire which is surrounded by some insulators like that is called as myelin sheath so all your myelinated fibers is derived from a specialized cell called as quanzel so quanzel 
is responsible for generation of myelin sheath. So which cell is responsible for generation? Your answer should be squan cell. What is this node of Ranvier? This is very important. Now, if you take the conduction of impulses, it is called as saltatory conduction. The conduction of impulses in our body, we call it as a saltatory conduction or we give it a name jumping conduction. What is this saltatory or jumping conduction? Now, just now I told you, we are mainly made up of myelinated nerve fibers and these myelin sheets are acting as insulators. Then you should wonder if, suppose there's an insulator on the surface, how is it able to conduct potential? Because potential is basically again flow of ions. We'll be talking about it extensively in the next video. It is just flow of ions. There should be some conduction, but if there are myelin sheath, it is not possible for it to conduct, right? So how it is going to do so is at some points along the length of the axon, myelin sheath is deficient. For example, if you appreciate at this particular zone, this portion, this portion, this portion, at all these places, if you appreciate myelin sheath is absent. So what the impulses will do is it will start jumping from one node of runway to another node of runway. So all these you know, uh, pieces of wax on where myelin sheath is absent is what is called as node of runway. So what is going to happen? The impulse is just going to jump from this node of runway to this node of runway. It's just going to jump and identify node of runway and that is how it is going to conduct. So that is why we call the mode of conduction as saltatory or jumping conduction. So the conduction is not along the entire length of the axon, but it is going to be from one node of runway to another node of runway, where the impulses are just merely going to jump from one place to another node. This is what is called as saltatory or jumping conduction. So in the introduction, that's all. This is the uh, information that I want to share in this video. Just try to understand the classification of nervous system and try to know about the neurotransmitters released by each of the nervous system, its functions, and try to know what is solitary conduction, what is the source of myelin sheath, that is the squan cells, and yes, one more point I forgot. See, when I recall, I remember. They can ask you a question on examples for bipolar cells, example for multipolar neurons, examples for pseudo unipolar we'll just try to understand this say suppose this is a cell body now an axon is going to develop as a result of protrusion of the cell body like if you remember if you are in 12th grade or said about pollen grain you will know that through the germ pore you will have the pollen tube that develops. Along the pollen tube, you will have the male gametes that will be coming, right? The same thing, what happens with these neurons is, the cell body will give a small tubular-like pro projection or a pole-like projection. And along this pole, you will have an axon being developed. So from the cell body, if it is like, this is like typical an asteroid-like shape, right? So you will have poles that is going to originate and that is going to give rise to a particular axon. If there is one pole arising, so we will have only one axon. That is called as unipolar. If two poles arise and we have two axons, I call it as bipolar. If more than two poles arise and they give rise to multiple axons, then I call it as multipolar. So bipolar, if you take, I have got two axons, right? So two poles giving rise to two axons. So where I will be able to appreciate it is in the retina of the eye. I'll be able to appreciate it in the retina of the eye. And if you take multipolar, I'll be able to appreciate it in the cerebral cortex because 
the cerebrum or the part of the brain is where almost many impulses are going to come and relay right so you need to brain has to know look into all these sites so it has to have lots of axons so multipolar neurons are found in your cerebral cortex now talking about pseudo unipolar neurons what are the pseudo unipolar neurons found is mostly found in the developing fetus so pseudo unipolar is nothing but it seems to be unipolar but it is not unipolar so for example this axon suppose say we have one pole and that one pole is giving rise to an axon that axon in between can divide into so many branches or something like that. that is called as pseudo unipolar it seems to be unipolar but it is not actually so that is called pseudo unipolar so examples of these are important so bipolar found in retina of the eye we'll again study the structure of the eye and then cerebral cortex is where we find multipolar neurons pseudo unipolar are found in developing fetus just know these examples might be asked in your neat exam so with this i would like to conclude my video meet you all in the next video thank you all bye bye